there's something missing from my channel. It's really bugging me. Yeah, all right, that was a predictable pun, I admit it. But we, we do seem to have a bit of a gap in the tutorials available on this channel where I've not really done anything for Tyranids. I got a really lucky opportunity to, uh, to fill that gap recently as I was commissioned to paint a Swarm Lord in the Hive Fleet Behemoth colours. Here's a little look at how that came out first of all so you can see what we're heading towards today. Now this presented a really interesting challenge and it was something that uh, I actually hinted at in a previous video where I painted a Karandras. This was an opportunity to be able to strip back and do some really back to basics painting because the person who commissioned this was actually kind of struggling for how they wanted to finish their entire army. They hadn't really settled on anything and had just done a few test miniatures and hadn't come up with anything that was a definitive this is how I'm going to do my army kind of approach. Now the customer is very much a beginner painter so I knew from the start that if I was going to produce anything that they were going to be able to replicate steadily whilst still feeling like they're learning some stuff and improving I was going to have to keep it super simple. So I actually actively set myself the challenge for this one because from that Karandras I learned that it's actually a lot of good fun to paint in this way. So I decided that I was going to do absolutely no advanced techniques on this miniature whatsoever even down to the basing at the end being all pre-existing products. Other than the base rim, there is no painting on that base whatsoever. Everything is just stuff glued to it as it comes in nature. So this is a really, really fun opportunity to just remove a lot of the more advanced stuff that we do on commissions and focus on trying to make something look as good as it possibly can, but still keep it really beginner friendly. So let's dive in to this Tyranid Swarm Lord, painted with literally no advanced techniques. I really don't know how I did this. <laughs> okay, let's not beat around the bush here then. We've got Mephist and Red on all of the areas that are going to be red. The miniature was primed black. We don't need to spend much time talking about that. It's very straightforward. So the first process, we're going to get some Talisar Blue contrast paint. We're going to mix that with some Larmian Medium, and we're going to wash all over the red to give a ton of depth and to give some really nice character and contrast. You can see here in the little completed video, once this is washed all over, it's really, really good at pulling out all of that detail in the structure of the miniature, making it look super sexy. And from there, we're then going to break out the dry brushes, and we're going to go for a really smooth, really slowly built up dry brush here. So I'm going to start off with Mephiston Red, and this is going to be an all over dry brush. We're looking to really get into the miniature and the only parts we don't really want the dry brush to hit are those deepest recesses that we've shaded blue. We pretty much want everything else to be covered. From there, sticking with a large dry brush, we're going to now go into Evil Sun Scarlet. And again, I'm making sure that I wipe off really almost all of the paint on the brush here so that I can build it up really slowly because I want a lot of smoothness to this dry brush. So we're going to be kind of attacking it a little bit lighter than we did last time, but we're still going to be being pretty thorough with the Evil Sun, still making sure that we get good coverage with it. One of the things I do want to do here is make sure that I'm kind of doing a sense of volumetric lighting as I build up this dry brushing. So as I go through these brighter colours, I'm going to be sticking just to kind of the tops of surfaces, the areas that I want to catch light, the areas where I want to draw people's attention. For the third set of dry brushing, we're on to Wild Rider Red now, and this is where we start to really focus in now. I am still using the large dry brush because I do still want to cover quite a bit of area, but I'm being very careful to make sure that it's sort of tops of volumes, tips of fingers, and you know, the facial structure and stuff like that. Make sure that I'm placing these highlights where I really need to have some brightness to pull in the viewer's eye. And then finally, as we get down to Jacaro Orange, the brightest color in the highlight, I'm actually gonna step down to a really small dry brush now. This is a Rosemary & Co. smushing brush in the smallest size. And I'm gonna make a point of just looking for things like facial features, really, really fine little bright areas, really small areas. And because I'm building this up so slowly, because I'm making sure that my brush is really minimally loaded and I've got a lot of control over the dry brush, I can just keep concentrating on an area, adding more and more dry brush to it until it builds up to the brightness that I want. The advantage here is that because the paint dries almost instantly, you can kind of see how transparent it is as soon as it's laid on. So if you want more brightness, you can just continue to intensify the dry brush. 
Once we've got all of that lovely dry brushing done, we then need to black out all of the swords, the carapace, uh, even the toxin sacks I blacked out at this point. Quite a lot of the miniature, to be honest, any little spines and hooks and stuff like that. So this is what that looks like once it's all done. It's very nice. It's uh, you know you, you can start to get an idea of where this color scheme is going to go. And this is just basic blocking out with scale 75 art black. Okay, now I did say that everything here was going to be very beginner friendly. I'm intending to use no advanced techniques, no expensive equipment, you know, just brushes and basic paints. However, that doesn't mean I'm not going to challenge you if you want to reproduce this color scheme. I want to get that really nice textural lining effect on the carapace, which you see a lot in the GW box arts, you see a lot in the heavy metal renditions of Tyranids. I'm going to keep it a little bit simpler, because normally if I was doing this for myself, I would actually have this line structure covering the entirety of the carapace, I would leave none of it absolute black. And what I would actually do is build up some really faint transparent lines first of all, and then build those into the brighter lines towards the edge. I'm not going to do that here because I want this to be replicable by anybody. I want it to be a nice super beginner friendly version. So instead of building up lots and lots of transparent paint, we're just going to take Sotec Green and start to put those lines in towards the edges. Now the really important thing here is that we're always painting in the same direction, building up brightness towards the same point. This is a workup that goes over a few iterations, a few built up layers, and it's those stacked layers of paint that create that illusion of drawing our eye towards the edges. So we need to make sure that our strokes are always going towards the edge where we want to draw attention. If it's on like a hook or a claw or something like that, then we build those up towards the tip. If it's on an area of carapace, then we make sure that we pick one direction and that all of those areas of carapace that are adjacent are all done in exactly the same way. Okay, now we're going to take Temple Guard Blue and we're going to do exactly the same thing that we've just done. So this is going to be a little bit challenging, a little bit time consuming, but it's really worth sticking with. We are, however, going to just shrink those highlights down a little bit. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to paint thinner lines, but you are going to want to paint shorter lines so that the end of the line is revealing a bit of the previous colour. So you want to try and make sure that all of your lines are placed roughly in the same place that the one previous was, but you can run them a little bit shorter, you can keep them just a, you know, a, a little bit easier, a little bit more concise, and as you build up towards those tips and edges, you're going to see the effect starting to occur already. And then we're just going to introduce a little bit of white into that Temple Guard Blue. In this case, I'm going to use Dragon White from Reaper, but again, feel free to use whatever white you have at hand. And we're going to go down again another stage smaller. So the key here is that these lines, again, are shorter. They don't necessarily have to be thinner. I would recommend painting them as thin as you're comfortable with, but I wouldn't try and go as thin as you're absolutely capable of doing, because by the time you go all the way around the miniature, you'll have painted thousands of those thin lines, and you'll be so fatigued that you just won't want to repeat the process on two more colours. So the trick here is just to make sure that the lines are shorter each time and that you're choosing a thickness of line that is comfortable to you. And then at the very, very tips of just a couple of little accent areas here and there, you know, the tips of claws, the corners of carapace shapes and stuff like that, we'll just put a little touch of pure white just to finish off that highlight scheme. This is, as I said, a little bit blockier than you'd maybe do it if you were trying to paint for display purposes, but it's a really good facsimile of that effect. You still get what looks like blending here because you've still got progressively brighter colours leading into each other, which tells your eye that what you're seeing is a blend. So with all of that said and done, here's what my carapace looked like when it was finished. Now, as I say, there's definitely a smoother, more careful, more considered version of this that you can do if you're trying to hit a more sort of high-end look to the piece. However, for something that you want to be replicable across an entire army, I think this is a really nice way to tackle it that won't take too long. Okay, now I'm going to target those toxin sacks that are under each of the swords. I'm going to use this Alien Goo from Reaper Master Series here, just because I can't really find a paint in any other range that looks quite like it. It's a fluorescent green with a really strong white base, which means that it covers really nicely. But as you can see, because it's so fluorescent, so bright, it's going to lend really well to a trick we're going to do next. And that is to take some P3 Blue ink, this is a slightly glossy ink, and we're going to thin it right back to make like a really heavy glaze. So it's going to be very saturated in colour, but it's going to be thin enough that it's just going to drop off of the flat surfaces and sink into the recesses. 
will spread this over all of the toxin sac areas and what's going to happen is you'll instantly see what almost looks like a glowing effect occurring where we've got these fluorescent green surfaces with these really deep blue veins in between them. It's a really cool effect and it's very simple to achieve. Okay, I'm gonna grab some Vallejo model color magenta fluorescent now, and I'm gonna thin this right back as well. Again, this is a very transparent paint, so thinning it back is uh, it's very good for, you know, if you're doing glazes and tinting and things like that. Um, and this, I guess, is a little sort of hint at a more advanced technique. What, what we're doing here is called filtering. So we're gonna just evenly paint this thin paint over the tongue just to enrich the color on the tongue and make it look a little bit different to the rest of the red carapace. I still want it to be red, but I want it to kind of look a bit more lively, like there's a bit more blood pumping through it, like it's, you know, slightly different to the to the main body of the creature. So I built up about three layers of this to get to the color that I wanted, and it works really, really well, and it's very simple. And then we'll grab that tongue, those toxin sacs, and uh, we're gonna just give them all a coat of gloss varnish. I use Ard Coat from GW if I'm sort of brush painting it, and uh, that works great for me. Couple of coats of Ard Coat over these areas, and they're just gonna look nice and glistening and deadly. For the basing on this miniature, I actually decided not to film it. And the only reason I decided not to film it is because it's just me gluing existing things to a base. I mentioned at the start that I did absolutely no painting on the base, again because I wanted it to fit into that really beginner friendly brief. So we're going to go to the final reveal video now, spin this swarm lord round and show you what we came up with. And I do want you to bear in mind as you look at this that all of this is really simple, replicable, beginner friendly stuff. So uh, if you feel like it hits that brief, if you feel like it's a good example of some of the cool stuff you can do without advanced painting techniques, get at me in the comments and let me know. Here's that reveal video. And so there it is, one big scary bug stomping his way through an alien carpet of flowers or something. I, do you know what? I didn't really think the story through. I just wanted the base to look pretty. I thought it was a really nice stark contrast to have this very natural, pretty looking base next to this kind of biomech almost looking monster. I felt like that was a, a really cool juxtaposition. So I hope that you like it too. And of course, get at me in the comments. As I say, let me know how you feel this translates to that kind of beginner friendly painting method. I do want to do more stuff like this from time to time. I don't want every video to be full of this type of blending and that type of glazing and you know all of these advanced techniques so if you enjoyed this type of content that's aimed more at an absolute beginner then let me know in those comments if you like the video remember that you can hit that thumbs up button you can also subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on when I am releasing new videos if you really love what I'm doing here on YouTube and you want to support the creation of the content, you will find a link to my Patreon in the description along with all of my other social medias. Tiers on Patreon start from as little as $1 a month and you can help me keep the lights on here. But with all of that said, it's time for me to get out of here now, so I'm going to thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, everybody.